Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Nathan's 3D Factory. I'm happy to have you here and in this tutorial what we're going to do is we're going to do part two of the tank tread. So let's get started in our scene here. Okay, so here we are in our scene where we have the tank tread going on. So if you remember we are able to move all these locators along a path and we are able to rotate the wheels. So that was part one. I hope that, uh, that you are able to follow along with this. If you haven't seen that, I recommend you highly go to the first tutorial. In this one what we are going to do is we are going to add the treads. I also added a few locators on between now and the recording of the previous episode. So instead of like five or whatever we had, or, no it was ten, we have twenty of these so we can, so we can get a better tread. So anyway, what we're going to do is that we're going to enable this filter so that now we can make things selectable or not. I'm going to lock that for now. And then I'm going to be doing all my work right here at the origin uh, point, zero, zero, zero. So first what I want to do is I want to take one of these trackers and then I want to turn off the constraint that I made. It's going to be very important. I'm going to do plane, and then I'm going to go to the move mode instead, and I want to get this so that median point is on. Okay, and I also want to get edge on there. There we go. Now I want to move this one unit. There we go. And then I'm going to take all this, extrude it along the z-axis, negative point one been doing a lot of practice on this so I know what I'm doing here now oh yes alright next thing I want to do is that I want to take this object and parent it to that empty that I just done here so I'm going to do control P and then I'm going to turn on that constraint because right now the last object selected was that locator there so now we got that empty right there now this is now sticking out. I want this to track to this object. So to do that, I am going to select just this. And I want to do a track to, but I don't want to do it the way that I would traditionally think to do, a track to. That's typically what we use, and I'll show you why. Tread tracker is going to be our object we're going to track to. Now, if we were to turn on this selectability here, and then we do G, Y, you'll notice something right here, if you can see this on the screen. This tread flips its axis. It's because it always goes Z up when it's doing the track two. So, I had to look this one up. Honestly, this was tricky. So, instead of doing track two, I did locked track. Someone provided this solution, I can't remember the name, but thank you, thank you, thank you. That was such a lifesaver. So I'm going to do a lock track to this one. Now you'll see, hold on, wrong one there. Try that again. This time we're going to read what it says. Okay. Tread tracker.001. Now it's pointing to the center of this wheel. We don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the axis. And the one that I found that works for this is the x-axis that you're going to lock that so it's going to lock this x-axis rotation right here so now if we do G Y now we have it so it's not flipping its axis like that last one pretty cool huh so now I'm going to repeat this process a couple more times and show you how easy this is it does take a little bit of work and it is repetitive so that's why I'm not going to go the entire tank tread I'll just do a few and then I think you can figure it out on your own. I know I can. So, Shift D. Now we're going to clear the parent by doing Alt P. And then we are going to change the track to that. Now, this tread tracker, I want to turn that tread locator selectability off again. This tread tracker is now going to be over here 
We're going to do the control P so that we can parent that. Then we're going to turn that constraint back on. We're going to do the same thing for a couple more of these. Shift D, Alt P, go to parent. And then we just keep tracking those until we get what we need. There we go. There we go. And then I'll do one more. There. Shift D. Alt P. And then zero zero four. So um, once you get it going, it gets to be pretty quick. But um, anyway, got a few of those threads. I'll do one more just because. one and there you have it or as the French say voila all right and now gy now look at that so if we repeat this for the entire thing really cool so if I rotate it along the z-axis then you may be wondering well gee this is all based off the Y constraint, isn't it? So, the answer I will give you in a moment. But I'm going to show you that we do have this now available. So it's on the local Y axis. Pretty sweet, huh? Alt R. But the way that I did this was that I ended up originally in the original tutorial what I did was on this driver I had this set up so that it was Y location in global space I later found out yeah that doesn't work but local space yes it does so I did the same thing for these wheels as well with their rotation you go to edit driver I did local space so you world space transform space and local space I use local space for this and that did the job for me so anyway, so that is the part two of this tank tread tutorial. You can model these treads so that they do, uh, so that they're modeled a little bit more realistically. I'm just doing these flat ones to demonstrate how these simple treads can follow this path. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. I sure enjoyed making this and learning about how you rig up these tank treads. So I'm planning on using tanks in some of my scenes. I mean, who wouldn't, you know? So this is all part of kind of the year of the duck and making sure that I got some really cool cartoons. So um, I hope you enjoyed this, this content again. Leave comments below. Make sure to subscribe for more cool content. I got more along the way. And thank you so much for watching this episode of Nathan's 3D Factory.